Client 1, Week 4. On Monday, to vary the sessions, we would do box exercise. We will warm up with a jog over 10 metres, then punch, then the punch the pad at one end, and then touch the floor at the other end. This should be done five times. It will be an effective pulse raiser and will provide something different from just a jog. In the box exercise session, we will be using punching bags and skipping ropes mainly, as the skipping provides muscular endurance training as its repeated contraction. I would ask my client to skip constantly for four minutes. In the fourth minute, I want my client to do to jump as high as possible so that power, which was the target, can also be improved. Wednesday, Friday and Sunday there would be rest days as he is busy on these days and Wednesdays and Fridays he goes to work. On Thursday I want my client to do Pilates. I want to focus slightly more on the core, so I would do exercises such as tabletop. However, if the client complains about back pain, we can try other activities such as plank, which may apply less force to his back. The positions need to be held from 10 seconds to a minute. Plank is held for a minute. The leg raises in tabletop can be held for about three seconds and then switching. On Saturday, I want my client to do a swim as it will improve his cardiovascular endurance whilst providing more variety than going on a run. A run could be tedious as swimming may provide a more exciting option. Swimming may also reduce the amount of stress in his back instead of running on a hard floor. This is an appropriate alternative. This swim would last a maximum of 45 minutes. A gentle jog before swimming should be enough to warm you up and some cool length at the end to cool you down. Week 5 On Monday evening of week 5, my client is free. However, the Sunday of week 4, he will have done a swim. Therefore, he is only going to do a short session on the Monday. He will do a hit session with the battle rope. The same repeated contractions felt in the leg. Hips and upper body will improve my client's muscular endurance and he is going to be repeatedly completing the contractions in an attempt to not tire. He will do 10 seconds lifting the battle rope in both hands, then a 10 second break and repeat the session. The recession would only last 5 to 10 minutes. My client would stop when the technique of the battle rope is going. This is even more important in my client as they struggle with back pain. Therefore, bad technique could make his condition worse. During the session, I want my client to judge themselves on the RPE scale. I want him to be above 14 continuously because he is not working for a long amount of time, meaning he needs to work harder to feel the effects of the exercise. Before battle ropes are done, there needs to be an adequate warm-up. In the warm-up, there needs to be a pulse raider. Razor, Monday we would start with a period of running between cones. At every cone, you need to touch the cone. Because my client plays cricket regularly, the client bends down at speed to pick up rolling balls when fielding. Therefore, adding the cones to cause the client to bend down can improve performance during the game. After the first stage of the warm-up, that would last approximately five minutes, so it provides an adequate pulse raiser to get the blood flowing around the body at a rate which is appropriate for exercise. This warm-up was used in week one because of its relevance to my client's sport. I think it's appropriate to repeat. The client would then move on to some section of stretches. I would want stretches that work on the whole body. I'd want my client to do dynamic stretches such as lunges, maybe adding a spinal twist, as the spine can be tested when using the battle ropes. Other stretches such as tricep stretch where the arm is pushed over, up and over your shoulder would be used because the upper body comes under a lot of stress when using the battle rope. Prior to using the battle rope, there would need to be an effective cool down. In this cool down, due to my client working anaerobically in the session, there needs to be a section of exercise where the pulse is maintained at an elevated level due to the lactic acid needed to be broken down and oxygen still needed to be due to oxygen depth. Therefore, at the end of the session, I would get my client to do 30 seconds of jumping jacks, making sure to lift their arms so that blood is flowing to them because they will have been heavily used during the session of battle rope. This should just keep their heart rate and breathing rate elevated to the point where the body is receiving the supply of substances ne needed. They could also do some stretches at the end of exercise. The ones done in the warm-up will do. They just have to be repeated. Remember these stretches will be held for 3 to 10 seconds. On Tuesday, my client would not do any exercise due to his rugby training in the morning, and I don't want to add a session on that day as well as him due to being, him being tired not being able to give the full amount of effort and therefore he is unlikely to experience the same benefit. Wednesday and Friday I would also not make him do a session as he has work on those days and long days at college making it inappropriate for a session to be held on those days. On Thursday we would do a session where we would work primarily on my client's cardiovascular endurance. I want my client to do five minute intervals of running and cycling for 30 minutes. Therefore he will do three intervals of running and three intervals of cycling. Throughout this session, my client will be working in their aerobic training zone, which I'll be, which I will monitor them by asking minutely what their heart rate is, whilst having their heart rate monitor on. To prepare for what he for this, he needs to perform an adequate warm up. I would do a whistle warm up again, as it helps with him with his sport. He will be jogging for five minutes whilst they blow whistles. The whistles have different commands, e.g., one whistle is a jump, two whistles is a long barrier, three whistles is a run backwards, four whistles is sprint. 
The change of speed, direction and movement my client would uphold in his warm-up will be relevant to his sport, therefore making it inappropriate. And it can also engage his attention if some of his sport is incorporated within, within instead of a jog for just five minutes. This still acts as a pulse raiser. After the pulse raiser, we would move on to do some stretches. I don't want this section of the warm-up to become tedious because there is because it is often very similar. Therefore, I may put on some music whilst my client does the stretches. But as an instructor, I must watch out to make sure that the, when the client stretches, they are not bouncing along to the beat of the music, as this could cause injuries. I would get my client to do some crossover steps, lunges again, purely because the muscles used in cycling and running are stretched when doing lunges. Hill flicks and high knees could also be used. The high knees would be appropriate as the movements in cycling can cause similar positions that the athlete upholds. Yet again, at the end of the session, the client needs to cool down. They have been working aerobically in this session, therefore I just want my client to remain on the bike and pedal slowly for two minutes, working below 14 on the RPE scale. Once they have completed this, they then need to do some st static stretching. Touching your toes and stalks down would be appropriate, as the majority of the stress will have been on the leg. Remember the client needs to hold these for 10 seconds. Saturday we would do another session. My client said they enjoy running in our consultation, so my plan is to do fart leg training with them. Before I start my session, my client needs to warm up. In the warm up, my client will work over a netball court. We would start by running each third back and forth until you have completed the whole court. When reaching the lines, I want my client to touch the line with both hands because she has to bend down to pick up the ball and crick it when it's been hit along the floor. We will then move on to side step to cross one third, switching legs and coming back in high knees. Watching to try and get right angle, watching to try and get right angle. Hill flicks to stretch out the legs. Arm swings across the body because my client's arms will be working whilst running in the session. This should be done over the first third and back. In the session, I'll have a stopwatch. I will mix this session from walking, jogging and sprinting, maybe including a bounding skipping section to prevent the athlete getting bored and work on power. This sprint section will last about 10 to 15 seconds and the jog and walking up to two minutes. I will keep switching between these. However, my client will never stop because I want to improve his cardiovascular endurance as it was one of his targets. The cool down should con consist of a slow walk whilst I throw a cricket ball at him and he throws it back. This should simply engage him and will help him with his sport. On Sunday, he will have a rest, as he has done three sessions already this week, and I don't think it's appropriate to do any more, as he may feel like he has no freedom and stop enjoying his sessions. Week 6 On Monday of week 6, my client will do a session. He will revisit the rowing machine from week 1. He will work on the rowing machine for 5 minute intervals with 2 minute breaks, but instead of working for 20 minutes on the rowing machine, he will work for 30 minutes. This should progress the client and make them work harder. This is targeting his muscular endurance. He should be able to last the extra time as he has been working on muscular endurance for the six weeks. Before this session occurs, a warm-up needs to be conducted. We would start the warm-up with a pulse raiser. The pulse raiser in this session would be on an exercise bike. We would put a song on that my client enjoys and my client would do full cycles in time with the beat. After the song ends, I would keep my client on the exercise bike and get them pedalling whilst my client catches the ball with alternate hands. The client should be working like this for five minutes for it to be an appropriate role for pulse raiser. He would then do some stretches, such as the hamstring stretch where you bend over with one leg bent and the other leg straight and swing your arms slowly forward, stretching your hamstring. The stretch should last for around three seconds. He could then do lunges over 10 meters with a twist as well to engage the core that could be tested on a rowing machine. After working on the rowing machine, a cool down will need to be done. This should consist of low intensity exercise which keeps your heart rate and breathing rate elevated. I want my client to jog around the gym. I would supply him with a tennis ball that he will bounce on the floor and catch up his running. This is so that it engages his hand-eye coordination which will be needed in his sport. The use of the ball should also prevent tedium as running around a gym could be boring. Whilst on the rowing machine I want my client to work aerobically at 60 to 80 percent of his maximum heart rate so that he is in his so that he is improving his cardiovascular endurance and working in his aerobic training zone. On Tuesday, we wouldn't run a session because my client has a rugby session. We won't want to add a session on that day as well, to him, as well due to him being tired and not being able to give the full amount of effort and therefore he's unlikely to experience the same benefit. Wednesday and Friday would both be rest days because they have to work in the evening. On Wednesdays and Fridays and full days of college. On Thursdays, we will have a session. It will be a circuit. Each station lasts a minute and a half. I have increased the amount of time from the last circuit because he needs to experience progression. The activities I have chosen should improve my spirit endurance due to all being repeated contractions. We would do plank, wall sit, jumping jacks and bunch, punching bags to take the stress off the legs. If my client struggles with the extra time they can stop at the minute mark and rest for 30 seconds as I am providing no rest station. I will also include burpees in this circuit as the jump will help with power which is one of the client's targets whilst also working on muscular endurance. 
On Saturday, my client will have a rest day because they've already done some sessions this week. And on Sunday, we're going to do a spinning session. There'll be a warm up before the spinning session, which will require five minutes on the bike, just warming up at a low intensity, below 10 on the RPE scale. I will then put on some music and we will cycle to the beat. We will be switching from positions on the bike, from standing up and sitting down to keep it interesting. This will be done for 45 minutes continuously. This will be hard work, but my clients should enjoy this if they said they like cycling in their consultation. And it is different from running and will still improve their cardiovascular endurance. I want them to be working in their aerobic training zone, which is 60 to 80 percent of their heart rate during this session. I will monitor this by using the heart rate monitor and watching their heart rate and making sure it stays in that zone. At the end of the session, we will do a cool down. We will start off by spending two minutes on the bike pedaling extremely slowly. I may even get them to pedal slowly to the point where they can take their hands off the handlebars and throw and catch a ball with me as I will be pedaling on a bike opposite them. We will then get off the bike. Over 10 metres, I want them to do some dynamic stretches. We will do lunges, heel flips and high knees mainly as these are highly targeted on the bike, especially high knees as your body gets in the position of high knees and that right angle can be formed when pedaling on a bike making this stretch extremely relevant. After the dynamic stretches, we could do some static stretches, such as straddle, reaching over and touching your toes. These, these stretches, instead of the dynamic ones, which only last around three seconds, need to last around 10 seconds, but should help with muscle pliability the next day. Client alternatives. One of my most popular warm-ups is the whistle game warm-up. However, there is a possibility that we might not have a whistle. So, to make up for this, as an instructor, I can shout a number instead of whistling. And then the warm-up can go ahead as usual. Main content alternatives. Some of my sessions include swimming. If the pool is not available or my client does not like swimming or cannot swim as this has not been assessed, the client could go on a bike ride instead as it's still testing his cardiovascular endurance and muscular endurance. Cool down alternatives. After the spinning session, I want, I want, my client might want to get off the bike instead of continuing pedalling due to the boredom. The client could do a very slow paced job, possibly outside, as spinning would be inside. This could help the client and make them not feel as bored.